Welcome back to ESPN's Just for Kicks. I'm Chris Marlowe. Do you realize that one third of the people playing soccer now are women? As a matter of fact, the national team has progressed so fast that most people think our women are going to win the upcoming World Cup. Now, our Kevin Cusick has been following the team and recently he caught up with them. And Kevin, uh, this team has come a long way in a short time, hasn't it? Yes, Chris, they certainly have. Since the team was formed back in 1985, they've made consistent improvements each and every year. And last summer was a bit of a watershed year for them. They played an international schedule in about a six-week period where they came away with 11 victories and no defeats, beating some of the best teams in the world. The chief builder of this team is Anson Dorrance. He's also the head coach here at the University of North Carolina. And for him, winning is a way of life. He's won eight of the last nine women's NCAA championships. These are the faces that make up the United States women's soccer team. Each and every one of these women share the same dream, to become part of soccer history this November in China, where they will compete for the first ever Women's World Cup. Anson Dorrance has built a dynasty as head coach of the University of North Carolina and uses the same philosophy to build the women's national team. What he teaches is, it's okay to compete against your teammates. I know what makes a great player. Uh, what makes a great player is a great competitive arena. And so we set up as many of these competitive arenas as we can. We play uh, the most difficult schedule we can in the fall. And in the winter, we try to form leagues, the inter-squad leagues, where, again, the competition is difficult and intense. In the spring, we continue to play again. A lot of it, of course, in our squad because of the restrictions involved in uh, NCAA off-season soccer. But we're very serious about constantly trying to compete. And I think that environment makes the great players. There's no shortage of great players on this team. Since they've been together, extraordinary players keep showing up every year. We've been together for four years. Uh, and Anson has honed in his knowledge of the game with us, and we've uh, organized ourselves, and uh, he's, he's motivated us over the years. So really, I would say a lot of it has to do with Anson and the way that he's organized and he's, he's uh, fostering our love for the game. There's no doubt these women love soccer, and Anson is always teaching them more. But after going to an all-boys high school and coaching boys for several years, these women brought him a new perspective concerning communication. If you want to develop an excellent rapport with uh, women athletes, uh, you have to develop a rapport with them, not with their athletic side, not with you know, some one dimension of their lives. You've got to develop a rapport with them. And I think uh, one of the reasons I've really been excited about uh, uh, training women is uh, uh, how valuable these relationships are to both of us. Only 12 teams will compete in the inaugural Women's World Cup, and unlike men's soccer in the United States, the women's team is going into the qualifying rounds as one of the favorites. We want teams to come after us, and um, we feel comfortable being there because one thing this team won't become is complacent because they understand um, what has actually got us to the top, and that's hard work. And, um, you know, we can't just lose that personality overnight. Personality players are a big part of this team. They have an excellent blend of fighting power, athleticism, and enthusiasm. Experience up front comes from April Heinrich, Michelle Akerstall, and Karen Jennings, three of the best players in the world. One thing that I really love about the international arena is uh, what it is is your culture against someone else's. And I think uh, if you're going to be successful in the international arena, you have to identify qualities in your culture that are overpowering. And uh, the American women are very powerful personalities psychologically. And I think uh, um, that's something that uh, I want to rely on. Good try. Good you guys. Nothing Good stuff, on this nothing. one. As Anson relies on them, they rely on each other. One thing you mentioned is, is our team chemistry, and we view each other as a family. And we're so tight and supportive of each other. You know, if something happens on the field or in their personal lives, we're, we're ready to console them or help them out of it. And that, that's a big part of it. And just that we work so hard and we want to win. Yeah, because there's a bond between players as friends, which helps you on the field as well. Because, I mean, they're helping you not only as a player, but you know, they're not letting you down or they're not, you know, leaving you alone when you're not playing well because they care. So as a result, when you're out there playing on the field and you want to bust for them, you know, because you know they're going to bust for you. So everyone, it's a real tight unit. It's, it's great. Since the team comes from all over the United States, they train together only about once a month. But when they're not together, soccer is always the topic of conversation, whether it's here at the dorms at North Carolina or in Orlando, Florida, watching videotape.
it's so good because everyone works for each other. Like you think, okay, we're here in Chapel Hill, but we know the, gr the rest of the girls on the team are working hard and when we get together, we're gonna be fit and ready to go. We're all motivated. We're excited to play and we, have, we realize we have this great opportunity to go to the World Cup and help pioneer the women's game here in America. So we're excited about that. Christine Lilly is not only excited, but can see the vision of what it would be like to compete in China. Yes. Yes. Big stadium, people everywhere, my family there, and some friends. And just being out in the field and just like finally there amongst your players playing for the United States and playing to win a World Cup to be the best out of all the countries. Just be kind of amazing. <laughs> Every girl on the U.S. women's national team is serious about their commitment to 1991 and the women's first World Cup ever. And they seem to be so committed that having fun is somewhat a little bit difficult for them. But uh, actually, they, they've been having fun all along. Chris, back to you. Thanks, Kevin. The USA women's national team, you can mark this down. You can count on it. They are going to win the World Cup. You heard it here first. Next week, Kevin Cusick is going to report on the biggest upset in USA soccer team history. It happened in 1950.